Don't forget to go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance products. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So I finally got to catch the Linares versus Lomachenko fight, or Lomachenko versus Linares fight. I was out of the country, had a whole bunch of layovers and missing flights. Uh, it was a hell of a, a hell of a couple days, I tell you. But anyway, first things first, congratulations to Lomachenko. He stops Linares and wins a title at the lightweight division. It wasn't an easy fight for Lomachenko, not at all, but we're going to go ahead and talk about that. So Lomachenko, he gets a 10th round stoppage over Linares. The first thing I noticed was we're used to seeing Lomachenko in the ring with guys either shorter than him or smaller than him. And for the first time, he was in the ring with a guy that was taller than him and naturally bigger than him. He also was in there with a guy that was matching his speed. And he wasn't a deer in headlights when he was exchanging with Lomachenko. Because a lot of times you see Lomachenko in there with a lot of these guys, he overwhelms them. You know, mixing those pity pass shots up with hard shots. And he does a really good job of blending his attack, does Lomachenko. But that didn't deter Linares in this fight. Linares was punching with Lomachenko, and not too many fighters have done that. Linares, he was effective in a lot of his attacks. I mean, he was really effective when he threw a flurry of combinations, when he threw a flurry of punches, I should say. When he threw that lead right hand, of course, he's going against the southpaw. He was also throwing a really good counter uppercut that was effective throughout the fight. Now, clearly you can see a different Lomachenko when he's no longer the natural, taller, bigger guy in the ring. As Tim Bradley and the commentator said, he looked a lot more human in this fight. And credit to Tim Bradley, because if it wasn't for Tim Bradley, we would not have gotten a nice balance of impartial type of commentary during this fight. Because there were times when Tim Bradley, he would say things that you could tell the other commentators were thinking but they didn't want to say it because they did not want to undercut what Lomachenko was attempting to do this night. But that's not their job. Their job is to call the fight and be neutral. That's Lomachenko's father's job. That's Team Lomachenko's job to not undercut what Lomachenko does and praise him as the greatest fighter ever. That is their job, not ESPN's. Now, what's so ironic about that point is Tim Bradley is there as a color analyst, right? He's not the blow-by-blow -blow guy. And he had to basically be the color analyst and the blow-by-blow -blow announcer because the blow-by-blow -blow announcer, at certain times in this fight, he was praising Lomachenko so much, he wasn't even doing his job and talking about the punches that were landing or who was possibly winning the round. That's something else that Tim Bradley pointed out. It was a time where the entire panel, everyone but Tim Bradley, they were praising Lomachenko, how great of a fighter he is. And right at the end of the round, right after they start praising him, Tim Bradley said that was actually a really good round for Linares right there. Once again, these are things that they see, but they're not going to say it because they have a certain agenda. And their agenda is to make Lomachenko look like he is the greatest fighter of all time. And Lomachenko, no doubt about it, is definitely a great fighter in top three pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. But you still have to do your job while you're calling the fight. Now, I want to go back to when I was saying earlier, Lomachenko moving up in weight, you could clearly see a different Lomachenko. He looked 
mortal. He didn't look immortal in this fight, right? We've seen him hit more than he had ever been hit before. We've seen him get knocked down for the first time. We've seen a guy going blow for blow with Lomachenko, standing right in front of Lomachenko the entire night with confidence. And that is because, once again, Lomachenko, he's moving up in weight. And since ESPN's Dan Raphael wanted to compare Lomachenko to Mayweather, and that's who you guys have to blame. So you decast once you get upset because Lomachenko is being compared to Floyd Mayweather, you can blame that on Dan Raphael. I know you guys don't mind Lomachenko being compared to Floyd Mayweather if someone like Dan is saying he would have destroyed Floyd or he would have gave Floyd a hard time, whatever the case may be, comparing their record, their resume, or just trying to make a prediction in a fantasy match between the two. Well, once again, since Dan Raphael wanted to compare the two, let's go ahead and compare. When you look at the difficulty that Lomachenko was dealing with against Linares, this just gives you an idea of how great and special of a fighter Floyd Mayweather is. Because Floyd moved up five weight classes. You guys have to understand something. Lomachenko, he still hasn't come across the Maidanas yet. Fighters that are 20 pounds bigger than you, and they're all over you. They're walking through your best punches. They're awkward. They're unorthodox, kind of like Salito was. Now, if Salito gave Lomachenko all those problems in Lomachenko's natural weight class, imagine a Salito in his prime three, four, five weight classes above Lomachenko's natural weight class. This is what Floyd Mayweather had to deal with, guys. And once again, when Floyd Mayweather fought Canelo Alvarez, that was after Floyd already moved up five weight classes and Floyd Mayweather was close to 40 years old. I mean, how do you think Lomachenko would deal with 12 years younger than him, 15 to 20 pounds bigger than him, while Lomachenko is close to 40 years old after moving up three, four to five weight classes. How do you think he would do after his performance with Linares? Now, when it comes to the good news for Lomachenko, this is a great feat. This is a great accomplishment for Lomachenko. He's won titles in three different weight classes. He dealt with adversity, got knocked down for the first time. He was hit a lot more than we've seen him get hit before. For the first time, he rallied back and stopped the much bigger guy. This is all impressive, and he still did it with an enormous amount of skill. He started to wear down Linares, and eventually he got him out there with a beautiful body shot. Okay, that is the good news. The bad news is Lomachenko was not in there with the best lightweight. He wasn't in there with the best lightweight in the world. So the obvious question is, if he got hit that much, if he got knocked down for the first time, if he was in a fight that could have easily been a draw, if he didn't get Linares out of there, if he had this many problems with Linares, what type of problems is he going to have with the best lightweights in the world? How is he going to deal with a Mikey Garcia? How is he going to deal with a Robert Easter? How is he going to deal with fighters like uh, Regis Progre? Fighters that will be aggressive. Because once again, now we're talking about those Maidana type styles. Those aggressive fighters. Because if Linares didn't have that much respect for Lomachenko's power, imagine how other fighters are going to feel about Lomachenko's power. Once again... This is what makes Floyd Mayweather such a great fighter. Because once you move up that many weight classes, your power is not really that effective. Don't get me wrong. It's still, you can still but get my point respect. is, you're in a situation where you can only make a small percentage of mistakes in the ring, right? And that's why it becomes such a challenge to move up in higher weight classes. Once again, Lomachenko is pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. But since he's always being compared to Terrence Crawford when it comes to who's number one, we now know that Lomachenko, 
he would have had serious problems with a Terrence Crawford. And I know some fans are going to say, hey, man, well, he should have never had to fight Terrence Crawford. Crawford is too big, et cetera, et cetera. But if you think about it, this is the exact leap that Rigo had to make to fight against Lomachenko. It was the same leap. It was the exact same leap, okay? When Terrence Crawford was at 140, that's equivalent to Guillermo Rigo moving up to fight Lomachenko. And we see how difficult that it was for Rigo with that disadvantage. We know how difficult it would have been for Lomachenko. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good fights. Now the lightweight division is one of the best divisions in the sport today. You now have Lomachenko, Robert Easter, Mikey Garcia. You still have Linares in there, right? And a couple other fighters in the division. So the division is lit. And overall, this was still a great performance by Lomachenko. Like I said, I truly believe he's going to have a lot of problems with Mikey Garcia. I believe he's going to have a lot of problems with Robert Easter. It'll be interesting to see now Mikey Garcia and Robert Easter, they're in negotiations. So that fight is supposed to come to fruition next. So it makes all the sense in the world. The next fight for Lomachenko would be against the winner of Robert Easter and Mikey Garcia. Bob Arum, he already said that Mikey Garcia won't be next. But I'll go ahead and make a separate video on that. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.